Uh, thank you for your lecture. I just wanted to start off with that. I had a few questions um, regarding some of the fossils. Uh, firstly, I know you showed a picture of uh, comparison of Lucy's pelvic bone to a gorilla. And I was just curious because in my studies, I see that the development of obligate bipedalism focuses more on developing and uh, strengthening bone muscle there. And then we see in gorillas nowadays and more knuckle walking apes is a less developed hip bone. So I was just curious about how that fit into the um, non-bipedal view of Lucy and other Australopithecus afrensis specimens. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. So, so Lucy's hips were probably different than modern chimps. And, you know, they talk about the the hip bone flaring, you know, thing. And um, so we don't know how Lucy walked because we don't have a walking Lucy anymore. So we have to figure out, based on its anatomy, make guesses about its locomotion, okay? So all I'm telling you is what my evolutionary colleagues have written down. And they said it's a knuckle walker. Um, I'm not a paleoanthropologist. I'm admitting that freely. And I'm not able to defend or, you know, or to argue for or against this or that mode of locomotion based on anatomy. What I'm saying is they had, I read that they had um, wrists that lock, you know, locking wrist bones. We don't have that. Um, I see that they had hands for feet. They've got the toe bones that do this. Um, and so there were differences in anatomy between modern chimps and Lucy. I didn't mean to portray you know, them as being identical. But they say that Lucy was an extinct ape. And so um, I'm just telling you what they said. And so I think that leads to kind of the bigger question of how does that disprove Lucy as a common ancestor to the hominid line? If she is an ape, okay, if we come from that, um, then that doesn't that say that we come from apes if that exists? And I know that you pointed at Habilis and I have some disagreements on classifying Homo habilis as a single species. I, I see it more as the habilines with the recent skull developments. But um, through habilis, through Sabita and Nadali, and up through that line, I don't understand how seeing Lucy as an ape disqualifies her from understanding an evolutionary lineage. Right. Okay. Great question. And so I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure I'd go that far. Um, I'm saying that if if the evolutionary community sees Lucy as an ape, and so does the creationary community sees Lucy as an ape, then we both agree mm -hmm. Lucy was an ape. And so does that mean that Lucy is in our ancestry? Some evolutionists say yes, some say no. The, the data are this, just that it's an ape. What we need is a transition, and we don't have that. We don't have a, uh, an uncontested transition. And, and so in other words, my argument is a negative argument. I'm not saying that the bones show this or that. I'm saying that, there, that, there's, that there's no uncontested um, transition that I've yet found that goes from ape to, to, to humans. And I understand that. And I think where I struggle with the logical leap is I don't understand how not having a transitional fossil in, in a certain instance proves evolution wrong. And even more that some contest over the significance of certain fossils how that can contestation like proves evolution to be insignificant. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to say that. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm saying that the data are consistent with separately created kinds. Okay. That's all, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it disproves evolution. I'm saying that we have humans, and then we have apes, and then we have conflations. Those are the three categories I found, and that fits the Genesis narrative. That's all I'm saying. Okay, yeah. It just fits. Thank so. you for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>